in this video, I'll be proving from Oslo theorem. In this video, I'll also I'll be assuming knowledge of modular arithmetic. So, I have theorem a to the p minus a or a to the p is congruent to a mod p for p prime and a an integer. Okay, let's just hop right into it. Basically, what it's saying is that a to the p minus a is a multiple of p. It's divisible by p if you subtract a on both sides. So a proof of this is that uh, we consider 1 times a, 2 times a, 3 times a, on and on all the way up until p minus 1 times a. Okay? Uh, see it? Okay. So now once you consider all of those, uh, mod p, so we're looking at them when reduced. Suppose that two of them are equal to c times a is equal to k times a, or congruent mod p. <coughs> now, what would this mean? Well, there's a lemma that I won't prove here, but it's that c times a, or that, uh, a is congruent to B if and only if C times A is congruent to C times B for C an element of the integers uh, for the modulo prime, at least. Because that's what we're dealing with here. That's the only thing, the only, it's a less strict requirement theorem out there. But basically what it's saying is that if these two are congruent, then C is congruent to K, as you're just multiplying both sides by A. And A is not a multiple of P, or a factor of P. So, we have C congruent to K, but we only have C between 1 and P minus 1. Therefore, this congruence is really just in equals. So, these are each unique. They're all unique. Unique. Okay, and so, what you get out of this is that we have p minus 1 unique numbers. Basically meaning, we're going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, da da da, up until p minus 1, right? Because we must have p minus 1 unique numbers modulo p. And we can't have it be 0, because this is not a... F uh, p is prime, and this is not a... This is not a multiple of p. And because p is prime, any multiple of something that is uh, not a divisor of it won't go into it. Okay, so the big factor here is that p is prime, so that each of these are unique and non-zero, because p has no factors. So, what if we multiply all these together? So I have 1 times a, times 2 times a, all the way up until p minus 1 times a. What's this going to be equal to? Well, it's actually going to be equal to a to the p times p minus 1 factorial. Right? It's 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 all the way up until p minus 1. And then a times itself p minus 1 times, sorry. p minus 1. Okay. So, what else do we have? Well, this is going to be congruent to this, which is 1 times 2 times 3 times all the way up until p minus 1, right? Now that's because each of these individually are going to be congruent to some of these, and multiplication is commutative, therefore you can rearrange them. And you know what this is equal to? This is equal to p minus 1 factorial. And because of that theorem stated before, I could just cancel these out and get that a to the p minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod p. And then by the before theorem, a to the p multiplying both sides by a is equal to a mod p. And I think this is the best proof out there. Sorry if I went too quick.